zippity doo -dah. Beautiful day, great to be alive. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Chris Brown here again. Um, as you can see again, I'm hanging out in these beautiful surroundings. I'm here at the uh, Polynesian Resort here in Walt Disney World. These are the, the uh, I forget what they call them, but these are some sort of bungalows. There's a special name, some, some sort of a, a Tahiti bungalows or something like that. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you about in today's video is what we've been doing throughout this video series. We've been talking about those daily activities, right? Um, the things that we should be doing each and every day in your business. So let me ask you this. In your business, what is the what, what is your favorite thing to do in your business? What's your favorite part of your business? And so that's probably something that's very easy for you to do, right? You don't really, you know, nobody has to force you to do that. Um, however, there's other things in our business that might not be our favorite thing to do, right? Um, I know for a lot of businesses that marketing is one of those things. Sales and marketing is not the favorite thing that they, th that they like to do, but it's something that we have to do. So what happens in our business, there's, there's again things that we need to do and what, what, if there's any parts in your business that you don't enjoy, um, we focus on that. We focus on, on the not enjoying that thing or the pain that it's going to bring us. And so what we really want to do is we really want to focus on what is the results out of that if we do that. So again, a lot of times people don't like to uh, get on the phone or do some of the marking stuff that, w that we do here. And um, because of that, it makes their business suffer. Because you can only do what it is that you do if you have customers to pay you for that, right? And we want you to have enough customers and enough cash flow so you're not stressing out every all the time, right? So here's a little formula, uh, big, Big, very, very, very successful real estate guy came up with this. Um, Dean Jackson is his name. And uh, it, 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 one of the things that it's gone by is the core influence. But it's just planning your day, you know, that's what they titled it. But it's better, um, it's really about planning your daily activities. So uh, plan your perfect day. So put yourself in my situation. You know, I get that, yeah, it is sprinkling a little bit right now. But other than that. Uh, I get to come out here and I get to live in a vacation resort and is that is that a way that you would like to live your perfect day you know that was my perfect day and um, so if that's your perfect day let, let's go ahead and focus on what you would like to do each and every day and um, what, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take you to my computer because we got this little form and you'll be able to see that down below directly underneath this video and you can fill that out something that we really highly endorse and really highly suggest that you you look at it each and every day because again people lose focus you know let me like you know let's just say I uh, write something down here you know uh, there's one thing maybe you can see it there uh, they are there okay so this is the resort that we're at and um, I've already drawn one circle there and let's come over here and let's draw another circle and let's call this circle our goal. Let me write that down here. Our goal. You see that? Okay, that's our goal. But over here is the pain. Because again, there's certain things that we have to do in our business that might not be our most favorite thing to do in the world. So um, what ends up happening a lot of times is that's our goal. That's the results that we're going to get out of it. But if there's something that we don't enjoy again, we, fact, we focus more on the pain. And so what we want to do is we want to realign your focus. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to click on the link down below directly underneath this video. It's going to open up a form like what you see in front of you. Um, ideally, you want to print this out, and I'll go through this with you, but you, you do want to review this at, at least every morning and every evening, at least for a while, and then maybe after, after a while you could let up on it if you would choose. And I'm not even going to suggest that, but I'm just going to say, say you could let up on it after it becomes a habit and, and after it's ingrained into your head enough. 
So, uh, step number one is uh, what you want to write out is you, if you had no financial, geographic, or other limitations, how would you describe your perfect day? You know, people get too focused on buying stuff. Uh, and what we want to do is more or less as design a life. And uh, so, how would you describe your perfect day? What would you do? Uh, my perfect day was that I wanted to live near Disney World. I wanted to live my life like I'm on vacation. And I would go to Disney World and all these cool places pr pretty much every day. And that's pretty much what I'm doing now. Now, I haven't achieved everything, but I'm pretty close to it. Uh, the only thing that I'm not doing is I'm not going there every day because there's still stuff that I have to do offline. Um, as well but I'm still going off to these cool places making phone calls you know I'm, I'm pretty much there uh, what time would you wake up you know I for a while here I was sleeping in until I only wanted to wake up uh, here over the past few weeks though, I've been getting up at 530 in the morning um, because the problem that I have is I have insomnia I just not well I don't even know if I would call it insomnia it's just that my mind is so busy it just it, it, it won't shut off so I wake up sometimes at 4 o'clock in the morning and I just stay in bed uh, what I decided to do though is I started, decided to get up and stop wasting some time and when I go to bed earlier I'm able to, to get to sleep pretty quickly so that part has changed um, what would you think about and this is a big key and what I'm trying to do uh, ideally so back to the sleep thing, what I do is I, I listen to comedy shows and it just relaxes my mind. I don't think about anything and I'm not even paying attention to it. One of my favorites is Mr. Ed in Car 54. I'll just put my little iPod or iPhone next to me and I'll just listen to, to, to that and it relaxes me. I've tried other things and it doesn't relax me. But what would you, so again, what would you think about? Most most people who don't have enough money think about their money problems. Then successful people think about ways to make more money, and uh, so we want to try to break that as possible as as if we can. So, what would you think about? What ideally would you like to think about? I just want to detach myself from all of that and relax my mind a little bit. Um, what would you eat? I eat healthy. I eat extremely healthy. Um, so, in my uh, a lot of you are going to think I'm absurd on this, but I eat a lot of like weeds, grass, uh, dandelions, pine needles are very good for you. I eat bananas, oatmeal, um, what is called as raw food. Now, it's not that I don't go out and eat junk food. I, I definitely do, but I ideally like to eat good food. Uh, what would you do outside of your career? So... Uh, you know, I like to spend time with, so what I wrote is I want to spend time with my wife, I want to, you know, and because we're going to also talk about some community efforts too, and I'd go to, my, I'd spend time with my wife, and we're going to go travel all these places, and we're going to go to Disney World, and we're going to go do all this stuff. That was how I defined it. Um, what would you, uh, what would you, so I wrote this kind of twice, it's actually, uh, explain twice what would you do outside of your career how would you spend your time so it almost sounds like the same thing you can define it a couple of different ways now this one's very important what would your friends be like you know most of us don't the people who we think our friends are not really our friends in most cases they're just things that we like to do things with a true friend is going to be there supportive through there for you through thick and thin and that's the type of friends that you want. What kind of car would you drive? And uh, in my choice, you know, I, ideally it's a Ferrari. And, uh, but I'm not sure if I want to work that hard for a Ferrari. Uh, plus, I don't drive enough for a Ferrari. I, I, because, again, I'm very health-focused. Um, I walk a lot. I, I'm very, uh, that, I'm very uh, active, you know. But... Um, for some of the, the businesses that we do build, they do give you cars, and so they're going to give you a BMW for one of them. So that's my ideal car. So if you do have an ideal car, what you want to do is you want to stick a picture here, describe it, put it out in, in as much detail as you possibly can. What would you do for personal fulfillment? So uh, 
take for instance, there's a guy by the name of uh, Andrew Carnegie. He was very well known, very famous um, back in the day. And he wanted to spend half of his life making money and the other half of his life giving it away. Uh, Richard Branson runs his companies as a way to give it away. They're for-profit organizations so he can fund his nonprofits. You know, you can't be selfish. You can't be self-centered. Uh, that's why so many people are miserable. They don't give enough. When you start giving and put, put your problems aside and start focusing on other people, you get happy. Uh, where would you live? You know, I grew up in Michigan, cold, cold Michigan. I lived 10 years in Los Angeles. Then I moved here to Florida. Describe your house. It didn't really matter. Just it's a couple miles away from Disney World because I love Disney World and that's what I do now. Now there's a couple of places that I'm actually thinking about moving. Um, one in, in Celebration, which I do live in Celebration already. Again, just outside of Disney World just a little bit. Um, and then um, I put pictures of it. I put pictures of the place I wanted to live. What life purpose would you strive for? So your business is your business is not your dream it is a goal to accomplish your dream so again you can't be selfish you can't be self-centered you got to have a higher purpose you got to do something to the good of humanity and that's what makes you happy um, what time would you start work generally I start about nine o'clock that's when I start making dials and but I might start earlier than that if I'm gonna do blogging or anything like that how long would you work ideally two hours uh, that part I'm still working on but right now it's about six hours uh, how long would you work how long would you work you want to describe that so uh, more or less describe what you're doing when you are working um, as I'm building so right now I'm building my blog and need to once you get to about 360 blog posts um, pretty much works on autopilot for you but right now I'm working uh, about six hours on the phone uh, how uh, describe your perfect clients most people's perfect clients is just anybody who's got money um, that's the clients my uh, my perfect clients are alphas people who want to have uh, their business to help them to be, be not to provide a living for them but help them to live a perfect lifestyle and there's other type of clients that I have as well what interests do your clients have self-improvement spirituality um, then, uh, then, then, then this is when we go get into goals. Now, a goal, you may have gone through goal programs and most people will fail at their goals, right? Um, however, here's, there was a Harvard study and it showed us that, I can't remember the exact number of it, I think it was like 80 or 90 percent. When people wrote down their goals and reviewed their goals, um, on a, on a daily basis, about 80 to 90 percent hit their goals. And so, if you write down your goals, you're going to have a more a bigger likelihood that you will actually hit your goals. Now, if you change the word of goals to promise, 99 percent of the times you will actually hit it. And that's uh, again only if you uh, have a habit of not lying and not uh, you know holding back on your promises. Uh, so you do want, to, but you want to have it on all the areas of your life. You want a spiritual promise, uh, physical, mental, social, professional, so, and then at your state. So depressed people act like they're depressed. So even if you are depressed, act as if you are happy, and you will be happy. Okay, act like that you have the perfect life, even if you don't have it right now. Like when I lived in the ghetto, I was imagining that the ocean waves were coming up on my feet as I was walking down the beach, and I could actually feel the waves on my feet because I have a vivid imagination for one. But still, you know, act as if you're living that way now. Then design your perfect life. So, how much would your mortgage be, your car payments, your vacations, your shopping? How much does all that stuff cost? Uh, how much does it would it cost you on a monthly basis and then at the end of it how much then you come up with a total and what you'll find out is living this rock star lifestyle isn't that outlandish for you okay and I'll give you a couple examples so uh, we've you may have already gone through what we call as the mathematical formula to writing your own check so let's just say that your lifestyle let's let's dream big 
okay? Uh, let's just say that your income goal is a million dollars a year, okay? And now there's some of you that that's way outlandish and there's others of you that are, that's, that's not enough to even pay the bills. So, uh, you know, there's all types of people that I deal with. So write down your income goal. Now, uh, on your worksheet, as you can see in front of you, then divide that by your profit per sale. So the next thing that you need to know is how much profit are you making per sale? Now, let's just say that you had a product that you were making uh, $500 profit for that profit product okay some of you might also say that you're not making that much and that's gonna be hard to accomplish that type of goal so the answer to that question is either a get out of the business or B find a more expensive product because again one of the things that we've talked about before we have heard us talk about this is the problem that most businesses have is not having a cheap enough product and not having an expensive enough product ideally you should have a two thousand dollar product if you had a two thousand dollar product if you had 500 clients that would give you a million dollars a year is 500 clients a lot no it's not a lot at all, at all. so that's not and that's in a 12 month period now if you have a 500 hundred dollar product that would also mean in order to make a million dollars you would need two thousand customers right so uh you you how much profit are you making per sales so let's let's just say it's 500 and divided so you could take your income goal of a million dollars divided by your profits per sale equals let's in this example two thousand sales are needed now um income goal so you take your income goal put down your income goal again to a million dollars how much sales are needed you now know that you need two thousand sales now, if you do this over the internet, or let's just first of all do this over the telephone first. That quote say that you should close one out of every 10. So if you, you have 2,000 times 10, you need to make 200, uh, you, need, you need to make 20,000 sales pitches to generate 20,000 leads throughout the next 12 months, which is not that hard to do. I, in about an hour using the telephone, I do about two, I do, I do about 20 leads in an hour. So 2,000 in a, or 20,000 in a year is not that hard. Um, closing rate, Penn Island Studios. So if you're going to do this through marketing, through the internet, um, you know, media, whether offline or online, uh, Penn Island Studio says worst case scenario you should close at least a half a percent. So that means one out of every 200 people. Um, but what we find is you're generally going to do much better, better than that. But I don't like to over promise. I like to look at absolutely worst case scenario. Now um, there's another thing that we're going to look at later is is how you can because of word of mouth advertising. And we'll get this in, we have a section called the two hour workday formula. And we'll show you how by working two hours a day. A day. And I haven't done this yet. It's, it's some of my mentors that I'm working with, but people that I'm working with that, that we're all working with actually, that shows you how to make $100,000 a year by getting 100 clients all due to word of mouth advertising. So how many of you sales is not your most favorite thing to do in the world? Uh, that's a lot of you. Um, but could you make a hundred sales? And here's what we do by using this formula, even if you don't like marketing, even if you don't like sales, um, by using word of mouth marketing, the, the type of word of mouth marketing that we're going to talk about, you will generate so many sales through word of mouth advertising that you will never have to be required to sell ever again. We're going to talk about that more when we get into the two hour a day uh, or the two hour work day formula. Okay. And uh, I believe that is it for that. Yeah, that's the end of that, that form. So again, print this out, put this into action. Make sure you review this each and every day. But other than that, take care, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye now.